Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you all this secondary video, this follow-up video to a build that I did uh, regarding some Raspberry Pi stuff. So this is version 2, and I just want to talk about an update to it. So this is the original Zip It case that it was in. Uh, it's a nice little skull case. And the new version of it is now in a lunchbox. Because I just wanted more space so I can fit everything in kind of nice and com compactly. Uh, and also neatly and with a little bit more order. So went over to a giant lunchbox. Uh, it is quite considerably larger, much larger in size. Maybe about, uh, I'd say maybe about four of these kind of standing up, going back this way. It's lunchbox. It's lunchbox size. <laughs> I guess that's the best measurement for it. Uh, I do have some extra spare cables in the top, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, I think this build turned out really well. And there were some considerations, there were some things that led to me having to or wanting to do this. And I'll talk about those here now. So first, actually, hold on, before we do that, let's go ahead and give a tour of the components. So inside of this box, inside of this lunch box that we have here, we have a few different pieces. We have the Raspberry Pi 4, which is under here. And then we have the Raspberry Pi 02W, which is still back here. And then we have the router and a power bank. Uh, we also have a fan and then some dividers that kind of keep everything kind of neat and in place. And at the very top of this up here, we have uh, the wall warts or power that, that used to charge things. Uh, and then we have some various cables uh, so we can plug everything in to charge. So let's go ahead and go over what we're looking at. So a few things that are different from the previous build besides this whole entire case itself. Uh, this is inside of a lunchbox, and I could technically just take this whole thing out because let me just get this out of the way. It's kind of in the way, but this is just inside of a little lunchbox. Uh, as you can see, this lunchbox had a had a hard liner, hard plastic liner inside of it, so I just used that. And this one fits perfectly inside of this lunchbox. Uh, it actually came with a different lunchbox, which is over here. And I could fit everything inside of this one, but this one's not as not as uh, suave. Uh, it, it it didn't have enough. It, it didn't have the upper compartment like I wanted it to, so this one was a little bit better for me to do it in. Uh, and also this one's expandable too, so I could expand the bottom of this to make it a little bit bigger. But anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump inside of the box itself. So like I said, this is Raspberry Pi 4. One of the bigger changes inside of this entire build is that the Raspberry Pi 4 is now powered by not just the power bank. So this power bank, which is the Vruic, uh, the Vruic 20,000 milliamps, this is the same one that's in here. I just have two of them. Uh, this power bank works pretty well. Uh, it has three USB Type A's. It has a USB Type C for charging and also a USB Type C for discharging if you want. And it has uh, a, a lightning port and a micro USB for power in, so you can charge it as well. And also has a nice little power button so you can turn it on. And you can double press it to turn it off. And finally, on the lanyard here, uh, there's this little nice little cable that comes with it. Uh, this cable is actually USB Type-C to USB Type-C, so you can always have a USB Type-C cable with you. So, so those, are, those are really cool things I like about this one. I can also charge this while discharging or charging other things. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's a few different reasons why this is pretty cool. Uh, and also, if you recall in the previous build, I had a, another power bank inside of there that was connected to the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so this... This in lies the problems with this that particular iteration, with that previous iteration. So this, I think, only puts out maybe 1.5, 1 1.8 amps, or two, it, it doesn't put out two amps. And the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 4 definitely needs at least, at least two amps. Uh, 2.5, I think, is the target that it usually goes for, but at least two amps is what it needs, and this was just barely not cutting it. Uh, probably 1.5 at best. I don't know the actual markings on this one because it doesn't have any markings. So I could not tell you if I wanted to. Um, actually, I, I could find out pretty easily, but I, did, I didn't find out before this video. So you just have to take my word for it. Um, and the problem with that is that the Raspberry Pi 4 could be powered from it. But eventually the Raspberry Pi 4, if it was doing anything even remotely intensive, it would just not have enough power and it would just kind of power cycle, which is not good. You don't want that to happen. Also, another thing on top of that, too, is if I plugged in a monitor to this Raspberry Pi 4 while it's plugged into that power bank, it would run into issues to where, well, I see the, the low power the low power icon, the lightning icon. Things that you don't want to see. Things you don't want to see. All things you don't want to see. So um, I switched over the Raspberry Pi 4 over to a different solution. And that different solution is actually uh, just the uh, here. It's actually the Pi Power. 
So it's the Pi Power um, board, which has, uh, you can fit two cells inside of it, and it's charged by USB Type-C, so you can power in by USB Type-C, and you can power out from just connecting the USB cable. Uh, it actually comes with two very, very, very short cables, which I think I have one here. It comes with two of these very small, very short cables. This one's a uh, USB Type A to micro, or sorry, to USB Type C. It also comes with a USB Type A to micro USB, so you can do a Raspberry Pi three or Raspberry Pi four, which I think was pretty nice. Um, but I have two of these for a reason, and that reason is because uh, this connector broke. I've soldered it back onto this board. Unfortunately, the board is still dead. Uh, I probably didn't solder it well enough, but I have limited tools and limited expertise with soldering, so unfortunately, it did not work out for me. Um, so as a result, I decided to buy another board, which is why this board is here and this one's over here. But it works pre perfectly well for, for me showing you demos. Like it has uh, LED indicators so you can see what stage of power it is. It has four LED indicators. It has one here to show if it's charging or when it's charging. I put tape over it because the lights are pretty bright and in my face and I didn't want that too much. Uh, and then also has an on and off switch so you can turn the ups on or you can turn the ups off. The cool thing about this too is that even if you have the ups or if you have the ups off, uh, when you plug it in, uh, it will charge the batteries and power the Raspberry Pi 4. When you unplug it, it will turn the Raspberry Pi 4 off, basically. Uh, if you have the ups on, then it's going to be continuous power. Uh, you, can plug, you can plug in power and then disconnect power while this is running still, and it won't interrupt the Raspberry Pi 4, which I thought was a pretty, uh, pretty cool thing. Something I could not get my power banks to do consistently, uh, unless I wanted to buy a whole bunch of power banks to keep trying it out, but this was a much more elegant solution. Speaking of elegant solutions, uh, besides the complaints from the issue with me plugging things in uh, and the cables breaking, uh, we have here another issue that kind of ran into. This is what the Raspberry Pi 4 looks like. This is inside of the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 Pro case, or gym, by, by the people who made the gym case. Uh, this is just the one I got. This is the one that has the uh, exposed uh, micro USB in the back. But over here we have the power plugged in, and you notice this little this little thing here. This little thing here is a magnetic uh, magnetic power, and that has been the solution to this whole entire situation with the fragile connectors. Um, I have these cables here that connect my magnet, and they swivel, which is pretty nice. And it's USB Type A to whatever end I put on it, and it also comes with these three ends, which these three ends are uh, a lightning a lightning cable. Uh, connector here, a micro USB, and a USB Type-C. The USB Type-C for this cable is actually over here inside of this one. And essentially, it just kind of magnetically attaches like that. And when it attaches, it'll actually power up or start charging the thing. And there's a few reasons why I have that in here. Uh, one is to kind of deal with the fragility issue, so it's a little bit less tenuous to disconnect that. Uh, and then two is because it allows me to do some charging for the Raspberry Pi 4, which I'll talk about here in a second, I promise. Um, anyway, so I just want to talk about that. Uh, in addition to that, in my gym case, uh, you'll notice that this this uh, power bank is connected to the bottom through screws, and I had to basically drill a hole through the bottom of this. Uh, I didn't drill all the way through, but drill a hole through the bottom of this, lined up with the st where the stands were, and then put a long a long screw, a long Raspberry Pi screw, basically, that goes inside of this uh, standoff, and then from that standoff. Uh, sorry, from that standoff, it can go from the standoff into the board, and then the board has longer standoffs that it came with, so I use those longer standoffs, and then I connected the acrylic bottom that has the um, that has the logo for Sunfounder Pi Power. Cool. Sunfounder? Yeah, Sunfounder. Okay. Yeah, Sunfounder it is. Uh, so, so that's all connected, nice little elegant solution. Uh, and if you'll notice, or you probably have already noticed, that this is actually upside down inside of this case. And the reason for that is that on the bottom, there's the little power switch that we talked about. So on the bottom of the Pi Power, we have a switch for on and off. Much easier to reach it in this orientation than it is to kind of pick the whole thing up and then flip it over and do all this stuff. So we just kind of have that turned on like that. Also, there's a fan. That fan is connected to the Raspberry Pi 4, so it's, it's currently turned on. Oh, no. So the fan is currently turned on because I've turned on the Raspberry Pi 4 using the ups that's in here. I'll turn that off because we don't need that on right now. So yeah, so, so that's, kind of, that's kind of what's going on with the Raspberry Pi 4. That was the biggest change. Now, because of that change, this became too big to fit inside of the Zippo or the Zippet case. 
And because it became too big to fit inside the zip it case, I had to move on to a different case. That was one of the reasons why I moved to a different case. I had a solution to where I could have had all this fit by essentially having the by essentially having the um, power the power situation connected here. And then uh, this was let me see if I can get the case. And let's see, how do I have the setup? So I have the zip it case here. Right there, like so. And inside of that, we have the power bank, which was somewhere in here, like so. Let's go this way. And what I would do, or what I had to do, is I had to essentially plug this in somehow and like place this board here, like so. Actually, it was on this side, actually. No, it was definitely on the side. I had to basically place this board somewhere like that. And then I have to put the the router, the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W, and the Raspberry Pi Four somehow in here with cables, and it became became unbearable to the point to where things wouldn't fit. So long story short, I had to either find a better solution, find a different power bank that was smaller, or do this. And I decided to do this. This is uh, going inside the lunchbox. That's what the build is. Uh, also, you'll notice inside of here, besides the round and Raspberry Pi Zero Two W and the Raspberry Pi Four, is that we have this nice little insert, this nice little overlay insert uh, that is made out of this this uh, plastic, this corrugated plastic, uh, right there that I got from the hardware store. Uh, this is one's four millimeters, and this is white corrugated plastic sheet. They also sell black corrugated plastic sheets, which is pretty nice. I would have used that instead, but I didn't want to cut into my black corrugated board. Also. I think this looks fine. Like a black corrugated port board would look better, but this is fine. I'm not too not too uh, picky on that one. And then also I use uh, bobby pins to keep it all together. And this is uh, something that I've done before in a different build that I used to make a case thing or make a custom case insert. And it worked out really, really, really well. Uh, it's very sturdy and it's also very customizable. So you can make it do exactly what you want it to do. And there we go. So that's all connected inside of there. So that's how that's all connected by the corrugated board. And this fan, uh, as I mentioned, or if I didn't mention before, uh, it is currently being held in here by the bobby pins. So I have the bobby pins or the hair pins connected through the corrugated board, going through the whole the screw holes that the fan has and it holds in there perfectly. And the size just so happened to be perfect to fit the fan. Uh, it wasn't fully intentional, but it worked out pretty well. And then also I have this like little orange block here that's just holding up the router so I can actually get ac easier access to the uh, ethernet cables, ethernet connections if I really wanted to, I don't really need to. And then finally, or next to finally, we have this little window here which I think is pretty cool because what that window does is I can turn on the power bank and I can see how much power it has. Great. And also I can technically store stuff in there. Uh, currently is being used by that power cable because the power cable coming from the Raspberry Pi 4 is going through there, looping through there. So that's how it's set up. And uh, the way this is currently oriented, the way this is currently configured is that the, res the uh, power bank is powering the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and the router. And this cable, this cable that's glowing right now, blue, is uh, also connected to the power bank, but it is disconnected right now. Uh, this can go into the, oops, this can magnet on to there. And that will turn on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, or sorry, Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, let me turn this on as well. There we go. And the benefit of all that is that um, I can essentially have this charging from the power bank uh, and all other stuff. So, going to the final, final problem, the final, the other reason why uh, this is connected. Actually, no, I think I talked about it earlier, but I'll talk about it more because I do want to make sure I hit this point uh, hard is essentially um, <clears throat> the amount of power that's coming from this power bank uh, is reduced when you have more of things pulling power from it, of course. Uh, and for the Raspberry Pi 4, I could power it plus everything else at the same time without having too many surge issues. The issue is that as the Raspberry Pi 4 needed more power, or if the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W needed more power, or if the router needed more power, it would cause surges for everything else. And that was just no bueno, that was a, no, a non-starter. So solution one that I have for that was to essentially connect the Raspberry Pi 4 to this power bank and charge, or sorry, connect the power bank to this other power bank to charge it. And then once it's charging, it can charge this. And I also have a separate off button. 
and that's all fine and dandy but the problem that i have with that is that essentially this doesn't this doesn't have enough power to push out and as a result of that the Raspberry Pi 4 was actually kind of struggling sometimes so if i did something more intense besides just going to command line and typing in nano and doing some fun stuff there uh, if i did something more intense then the Raspberry Pi 4 just kind of struggled to stay on also, if I ever connected the Raspberry Pi 4 into a monitor, I would see the low power light, low power icon. So that was another issue too. So having this solution has been a little bit more elegant because now what I have is I have the option to disconnect this from the power of the power bank and just kind of put that to the side and then use a separate cable, use a different cable to charge the Raspberry Pi 4 from the wall. And it kind of it kind of does defeat the purpose a little bit of having a kind of fully portable lab. I, I guess it kind of doesn't, uh, because I'm relying on was this uh, 6400 milliamps, uh, 6400 milliamp hours for the Raspberry Pi 4. So just as long as I don't go over too much on that, I'm fine. But um, I can charge this separately from this, and I can charge this separately. Uh, and now this is in a situation to where I can plug this into the wall power this router, power this Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and this will still get positive charge, so actually charge. Whereas before, what was happening is that when I plugged in this power bank into the router, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, this would stay perpetually at not charging. It will stay perpetually at whatever level it is. So if it's on 64% when I plug it in and power everything up, then it's going to stay at 64% until eternity. But now with this situation, it's a, little bit, it's a lot less load on the um, on the power bank. So now the power bank is able to actually go in and um, receive charge or get positive charge. So it's actually charging. You know, it's not charging the fastest, but it's still charging positively while powering these two things. And that can plug the Raspberry Pi Zero Two or the Raspberry Pi Four in separately. So hey, so so that's that's what all is, that that's what that's all about. And then also, I don't have to worry about the fragility of the connector anymore, so I can just kind of disconnect that without too much fear of ripping out that USB Type-C socket, because man, was I sad when that happened. And the reason why is because I had it in this orientation, I had it in the upright orientation. Actually, no, I lied. I had it in the upside-down orientation. Um, but, no, 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 no. I had it in the upright orientation. Oh, I see. I know what I did. I had the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 in here. It was standing upright, and this was just kind of resting on top of it. That's what's happening. That's what happened. And what happened was that uh, the power cord was coming from down here, from down this little area, and plugged into there, and it just kind of wedged itself up and then ripped off the USB Type-C and just kind of ruined the entire board. So, to avoid that situation, uh, I got the magnetic situation going on, got the magnetic thing going on so I can help out. And then also, this is kind of oriented correctly, with it correctly, just upside down, and that's fine. And I can connect and disconnect without surging everything, which I think is the biggest draw to this entire build. See, nothing surged. And uh, this fan is also predicated on this Raspberry Pi 4, because this Raspberry Pi, 4, Raspberry Pi 4 can get pretty hot. The router can get pretty hot too. It's just that this, this can get hotter, <laughs> hotter, faster. So this situation doesn't really need too much of a fan. Uh, it's got its own heatsink stuff going on. This one definitely needed something to help out a little bit. So anyway, so that's enough about me talking about the entire build. Um, I will, oh, oh, sorry, one last thing. Uh, this USB Type-C uh, male to USB Type-C female here, uh, this particular connector is there to make it a little bit easier to plug in the power bank and start charging it. That's kind of all that, that's, that's all that really is there for. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about really. Um, oh yeah, I wasn't going to go with the blower style fan. I guess I'll talk about that for a second. Um, but unfortunately, the blower style fan, uh, it didn't really fit too well into the build. Um, I could put it back here, cut a little hole, so that way it can kind of suck air in and blow air out. But that's not the most efficient use of this blower style fan. Ideally, I want this blowing um, maybe this way, like so, uh, on the inside of this. So, so it's going to be inside of this wall, pulling fresh air from the outside and then blowing air down this way to kind of cycle it through. But the problem with that is I have to one, cut a hole inside the liner, which I do not want to do. And then two, this fan is actually kind of loud. That's not the loudest thing in the world, but it is it is audible. A little bit more audible than the Noctua fan. So, you know, a good amount of airflow coming from it, though. I'll give it that. But yeah, the fan was not as uh, useful, as great as this other no this, as this Noctua fan. And this Noctua fan is blowing uh, the air up and out. Um, it would be nice if it blew down. I can I can turn it and flip it to blow down, but the grate that's here 
it's only on this side, it's on the other side. So I was like, eh. All right, fine, I'll just have it blow air up. So it's taking the hot air from here and blowing, pulling it up. So maybe that'll help out with giving some negative pressure going on. I don't really know. Anyway, that's enough of me ranting about everything. Uh, actually, no, I lied. There's one more part. <laughs> There's enough space inside of here for me to fit another Raspberry Pi Zero. So if I could, if I wanted to, I could put another Raspberry Pi Zero in here. Uh, if I go with a Zero specifically, I could probably power it off of this router and not surge everything without too many issues because I'm, I'm, I've ran out, of, I've run out of plugs to plug in to the power bank now. So that means I have to steal a plug from here and then charge, or sorry, power the Raspberry Pi Zero from the router. I think that could work. Um, it requires me one to get a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is near impossible to get right now without paying an arm and a leg, and then two. Uh, I think I have enough components inside of here for now. Um, I'm definitely going to add more as time goes through, but this is what I have for now. So yeah, so there's my portable lab. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I don't really have anything else to talk about except for these are the power cables. I can charge everything, and yeah. Alright, so hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, I will see you all whenever.